So at risk of nosocomial infections, who are they? Uh, they are age more than 70 years, patients in shock, patients in major trauma, acute renal failure, com coma, prior antibiotics, mechanical ventilation, drugs affecting immune system that is immune suppressant and indwelling catheters and prolonged ICU stay for more than three days. So all these patients are at a risk for nosocomial infections. Next. So again, WHO has insisted world, um, the five moments uh, for hand hygiene, the hand hygiene day, which is practice. It's so important. It is very important that before touching a patient, the five moments are before touching a patient, before cleaning or aseptic procedure, after you touch any body fluid exposure like a urine or a CSF or a uh, uh, secretions from the mouth or after touching a patient and after pa touching patient surroundings. So there are two, that is two before touching and three after touching. You have to three uh, moments after touching the patient. So how do you go about hand hygiene or hand washing? Whenever you come in contact with a visible or secretions, you go for hand washing with an antimicrobial soap or an antimicrobial solution. Wash for, for rinse the hands for 15 minutes, 15 seconds, sorry, 15 seconds and go for whenever that is visible, evident touching of the secretions you come in contact with. If it, it is not the visible or evident secretions, or just you're touching the patient or you just touch the patient and you're out of that area or you touch the, any surroundings of the patient like a file or anything, you can use chlorhexidine or alcohol-based hand rub solutions at the placed at each bedside of your patient. So these five, five moments for hand hygiene, that is before, before touching a patient before cleaning or any aseptic procedure after body fluid exposure, after touching a patient and after patient touching patient surroundings are very, very important. And it is the cornerstone to prevent infection. And it is your responsibility to educate the people in and around, including the patient attendants or the patient himself and the housekeeping and all the nursing staff who come in contact or all the personnel who are in the care areas of the patient. Next. So follow standard precautions. That is irrespective. Standard are fixed precautions. Irrespective of what it is, you have to follow them. And specific precautions are for specific uh, diseases or for specific agents. So follow standard precautions, contact precautions. What do you do? You want to, you, you, you are, uh, you don't want to touch the patient or you're suspecting some disease wherein you have to protect yourself and you also have to protect the patient. So infection usually spreads by contact that is either direct or indirect contact with an infected person. So these examples are para-influenza virus, respiratory syncytial virus, varicella, herpes zoster, hepatitis, and rotavirus. What do you do? You wear the glove, gown, mask, eye protection, face shields, shoe and head coverings, and patient care equipment. And these should be used only for that particular patient. And when you move from a raw uh, soiled area to a now, normal area, the glove needs to be changed and doffing of the uh, whatever you wear should be restricted at that patient area and the, the patient, you have to doff yourself or that is, you have to remove all these things when you uh, are done with that particular patient. So, these are contact precautions whenever you come in direct or indirect contact with an infected person suspected to have these diseases, you have to wear all these protective gadgets to protect yourself and also the patient. Next.
So airborne, follow transmission based precautions. So these particles are in and around the air in the atmosphere. So these are mycobacterium tuberculosis, varicella, herpes zoster, rubeola virus. And uh, as I told you, these patients wherein the airborne precautions are required are isolated in a negative pressure ventilator. and respiratory protection must to protect yourself. Next. Next. Yeah. Droplet precautions. Now contact we have done. We have done with the airborne. We have the droplet precautions. So these droplets are small, less than five micro, mi microns. They are secreted into the atmosphere whenever the patient talks, coughs, or sneezes. And these respiratory protection when entering the isolated room, if they are spread within six to 10, airborne are spread all throughout, whereas these are spread within, within six to 10 feet of the patient. And you need to use disposable N95 respiratory mask and limit transport of such patients like these airborne as well as droplet precautions, patients whom like suffering with the tuberculosis or COVID or H1N1, you can't move them in and out of ICUs for some investigations unless otherwise they are very much indicated and they are going to change the management of these cases. So you have to limit them, limit the transport of the patient in and out. Next. So I have spoken about the standard precautions where you have gone through the contact precautions, you have gone through the droplet precautions, you have gone through the airborne precautions. Now comes the real ICU scenarios wherein apart from the standard precautions which you need to follow in specific cases, specific strategies focused on prevention of what are the nosocomial infections in ICU because you place some line, you get a line related infection because you place a corti or you place a urinary uh, folies, you get corti because you place an endotracheal tube, you get VAP because a patient has undergone a surgery, his is uh, developing a surgical site infection and his prolonged bedridden is getting bed sores or pressure sores and others being a uh, clostridium difficile infection or uh, acalculus cholecystitis or any other infections which are caused or which are acquired in because the patient is in ICU. And these are mostly line related or a uh, Foley's related or basically they are all device related. And so the bottom line is remove the device at the earliest to prevent these infections.